You are live. You sure? <laughs> Hello, you all. My, my sincere apologies. Um, we've just been talking for 35 minutes, uh, thinking that we're live and not being, and just finding out that we weren't. So we're going to do this again. And um, if you're tuning in for the first time, uh, hello, I'm sorry we're so late. Uh, this is the second time that I've done this. I'm so, so sorry to everyone. But um, before I properly get started, I want to make absolutely sure that this is running. Would you mind, Jane, just like finding one of those sites and just yep. making sure that it's running on it? Try, try my YouTube site. And I'm just going to babble for a little bit in case there is anybody out there in the ether listening to me right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. As a lot of you will know, I've done a lot of these live streams in the past. And while I can talk about wildlife and about fitness and about expeditions till the cows come home, technology is not my thing. And I've proved that so many times. And it seems I'm probably proving it again. What do you think? Are we, are we live? Is it working? We're there! Well, on YouTube at least, we are live. Um, everyone out there, I'm so, so sorry. This is so late. If it makes it any better, I have said all of this already once before, thinking that I was talking to you when I wasn't. Uh, but this time round, I genuinely am. So hello, you all. Uh, hello to my friends on YouTube. Hello to my friends on Facebook and to for those from Wild Training as well. So, um, yes, I've been wanting for a long time to make a video about expedition fitness, how we get ready for expeditions, how we prepare for an expedition environment, and also how we stay fit while we're on expeditions in situations where you obviously haven't got a gym at hand. So this is what we came up with. This is wild training, and this is the muscle tunnel, this rather uh, superb facility here. Over the back here, we've also got not only the world's biggest tractor tire, but an actual car which is used for deadlifting. Uh, obviously, before we started, I got warmed up by doing you know, a couple of hundred reps on that. And also, we've got all the stuff that I like best in here, a lot of which are the kind of things that I take away with me when I'm on trips. Um, but before I get stuck into that, uh, none of this will be possible without my good friend here, James. So I'm going to introduce James. He can tell you a bit about wild training, and then I will look up some questions if we've got some. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I got some, James. And so, uh, so yeah, I met Steve 15 years ago and started training him. Been hitting stuff ever since. But yeah, this this place, the Wild Training Gym, we, we built to make sure that we had a facility where we could make exercise more fun for more people. I think exercise is one of those things, and the gym especially is an intimidating place. So we tried to make our gym somewhere that everybody can come and have fun and learn new styles of exercise. So we do everything from strongman training to pole fitness to calisthenics to functional fitness of, of all forms and rehab work so literally anybody could walk on our door and we'd find a fun way of helping them progress their fitness no matter what level they're starting from so i've got a couple of people that have tuned in already who are, are at least letting me know that on youtube we are very much live uh, sam harris who's watching this while re re revising for his uh, biology a levels Hi, Sam. How are you doing? Really good to be in touch with you. Uh, Kieran Ward as well, who's talking about uh, volunteering at Dartmoor Zoo. Amazing. Um, and uh, Ollie here saying who they uh, love watching all my content and TV shows, love from Norfolk. So one of the questions that I've got here is about the equipment that I take with me when I'm going away. Now, obviously, space is always at an optimum when you're training. You want to try and have stuff that can pack down into as small an area as possible. So the number one bit of kit that I always take away with me is is this so this one is a uh, a trx but there are oh no that's the generic isn't it yeah 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 so th this is essentially a suspension trainer it's a couple of bit of straps yep. um back when i um started off uh judo we used to have just a couple of belts that we tied together and you could use them for pretty much any exercise this works in a much much better way than that packs down to about that sort of size you can fix it to the back of a hotel room or you can hang it off a tree trunk and you can use it for pretty much everything using your own body weight and where you stand gives you uh, an increased amount of resistance so if you're doing a tricep extension then that is quite hard that is super easy and you can flip it around and do a um a bicep curl like that is super easy take your feet away from you and it gets a little bit harder uh, so give us a give us a, a quick 45 minute uh, power workout that you could do if you have nothing other than a trx yeah and i think 
like you said, the TRX is so ridiculously versatile. It really changed the landscape of functional fitness. So as Steve said, you've got, you know, simple chest press type movements. So, so where you'd be doing kind of a floating press up and then you could flip from an upper body exercise into something like a single leg lunge to work your, your lower body and then come back to your upper body, do a body row. So that's going to be a, a big compound kind of pulling exercise. And then we could drop into a squat pattern, something like a, a, a thrust or a sprint starter. And, and then where the, the T-Rex really comes to life is when you're on the floor. So, so when you start to do like the more uh, core orientated exercises, side planks and things like that, and you maybe pick three of those. And if you did all of what I just said for maybe three sets of 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, probably got close to a 45 minute workout. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a really, really good question come in here from Danny Ralston, who says this year I'll be doing a charity walk 10 miles carrying 60 kilos in a military Bergen. Um, 18 months ago, I ruptured my ligaments playing rugby. So I'm a little bit nervous. Any advice? Um, loads, loads of advice. So the first thing is get your injury sorted. So the last thing you want to be doing is pounding miles with a heavy Bergen on if you've still got an injury to your ligaments. Take care of that first. Take really good care of it. Uh, and make sure you're doing uh, lots of the right kind of stretching. When I had ligament problems and I was doing a lot of mileage, yoga was my absolute savior. Um, and second, so anyone out there who's, who's doing big expeditions, when I first started doing um, endurance races and, and you know, big expeditions, the, the ethos was that you had to completely destroy yourself by doing lots and lots of heavy, big mileage. And all of that's changed. You know, now it's much more about doing quality work and lots of it. So you're much less likely to suffer from, from injuries. You're much less likely to, to do yourself damage. And you're actually going to prepare yourself an awful lot better. So, you know, when I started training for the Marathon de Saab, for example, which is a 160-mile race, we were go going out and doing 40-mile runs, whereas actually doing lots of five-mile runs with, uh, with interval training, with a, a difference of, uh, of the amount of effort that you're putting in, is probably far, far more effective. I and mean, would, you, would you tend to agree? Definitely. I, th I think high-volume repetitive exercise is where injuries happen, right? So I think the, the thing to not get sucked into is thinking you've just got to do that activity to develop your fitness. So there could be cross-training styles of, of, of exercise where you know, you're using different forms of strength, different forms of cardio to develop your fitness. So you're not having to do the same walk with the same bag all the time because that is going to create so much stress on the joints, on the muscles and the nervous system. You're not necessarily going to be able to recover properly. So I think a bit of variety, like Steve was saying, is, is definitely the way to go. So I've got a, um, a really nice question here from Olivia Scott, who says, how can you train to help prevent injuries when going on expedition. Well, the, the key to that, to me, is, you know, all the kind of buzzwords in, in fitness, functional training, functional in, endurance, uh, but it's all about having a, a degree of range of movement and flexibility. And for me, the key to that are these, the rings. So like I said, I've, I've been traveling with a, uh, with a suspension trainer in my backpack for 15 years. I mean, James introduced them to me after I had my big rock climbing accident. In recent years, I've actually swapped those out for the rings because I can get more out of them. They're, they're not as uh, sort of diverse or adaptable as the as a suspension trainer is. You can't get as many different exercises out of them. Um, but what you can do is get far, far more hardcore exercise out of them. So, James, call out, call out a few things, and I'll just do a couple of things on the rings to show you so uh, some of them. A classic has to be just the hanging L set, right? So bent arms, straight legs. So pull up halfway, hold that position for 10 seconds. You'll be knowing about it. Elbows in nice and tight. Literally just a static hold. And it's an incredible way of linking the lats, all the trunk muscles to the lower abdominals. Then we could go skin the cats to go upside down. Amazing. And here we could have an inverted position where we develop the, the mobility in the chest, the shoulders, making sure the chest and the shoulders are strong, but mobile as well. Come back up. And we could work on just a lower back extension. So extend up into a straight line, like a, a handstand. Come back to your upside down L sit to me. And this is where we just start to work on reps of extension, working through your lower back, strengthening your lower back without really putting any load through your spine. So a really effective way of developing your core strength from the front of your body and the back of your body. And here we could come down into a very slow L sit. So compress your thighs to your chest. And how slowly can you drop your butt slower, 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 slower. And that slow, controlled style of, of kind of full range of movement is an amazing way of developing your, your core strength. Yeah, you know, the thing I, I love about the rings more than anything else is that 
I, I find it's a challenge. Every single time I get on them, there's a new exercise that I can try to master. And that's one of the really key things about motivation is always having every single session, something that you're aiming towards. If you're doing the same things that you've done over and over and over again, and that you know you can finish, then you know where's the, where's the kick to your motivation to want to, to try and achieve a little bit more? Right, what else have we got? Okay, so let's carry on with uh, what Olivia was asking about training to help pre prevent injuries from going on expedition. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the big one that nobody necessarily focuses on is, is mobility. And not just getting more flexible, but like optimizing the range of movement and the control we have in our joints. So this is where for me, I think it's really important that we make sure we're developing our, our strength and our, our mobility in different planes of movement. So, so yep, we, we do a lot of work in a straight line. We run, we swim, we cycle, we row, we, we, we lunge, we push, we pull. But as soon as people twist and they pick something up and then they hurt their lower back or they hurt their knee or their hip, it's going to make any, any kind of adventure or challenge a lot harder to enjoy. Yeah. So, so I think we can use dynamic movements where we're talking about simple ideas, like rather than doing all of my lunges in a straight line, I could choose to step out to the side and, and create a side lunge. Now, the beauty here is you're lengthening the adductors. You're going to stretch your Achilles. You're going to open up your hips. You're going to start to develop your posture. Arms out is going to be a lot easier than sticking your hands out to the side. And that's a side lunge, a drop stance that we use all the time to make sure people's knees, ankles, hips, trunk work well, but work together in different planes of movement. And certainly those, those elements of tight hips through lifestyle, through working, being sat at a desk, it's a problem. So if we can help people work on their mobility, that's going to be a positive thing. Okay, so I have got another one here, which uh, is Alex wanting to improve in, um, in hiking and climbing. Um, so climbing, obviously the most important thing is improving your finger and forearm strength, but strength to body weight ratio is, is really the key. So diet, diet is hugely important with climbing. If you can shed um, five kilos of weight, then every time you lift yourself up on your fingertips, you're carrying five kilos less. And it works. It really works. The number one thing that any good climber is going to do before they, they start on a big climb is that they're going to shred themselves. So I would say looking at your diet, uh, looking at keeping on top of that is really important. And, and don't go too hard on your fingers to begin with, because once you get tendonitis, there is no coming back. Uh, anything else on, on climbing or hiking? That's, that's another really good example of, of like you were saying there, tendon strength and grip strength is, is, is from so many small muscles in your forearm. It takes a long time to develop, you know? So, so I think take that challenge your grip strength in lots of different ways, the Olympic rings, and, and that, you know, there's loads of ways of developing your grip strength. But, uh, but don't just focus on the activity. Don't just do rock climbing. There's so many other skills and activities you can do to develop your grip with a bit more variety so you don't overly stress those ligaments. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've got one here, which is from the lovely Ruth PC, who is a very talented uh, natural history filmmaker, who is asking, um, what can you do if you're stuck in a tent with very limited space for a week? Um, so that's really hard. You know, I know that Ruth, you do a lot of work down in, uh, down in Antarctica, places where there isn't going to be a tree to hang the, uh, the rings off or the, the suspension trainer off. So then the, the question becomes, what can I do with body weight and what can I do with body weight and potentially a, a, a small space? So I would say the, the number one thing, I'm sure James will show us some specific exercise in a second, but the number one thing to remember is that any time is worthwhile time. So if you have five minutes, six minutes. Don't think that that is just not worth putting the effort in for. You can achieve an awful lot in that amount of time, uh, particularly if you don't, if you do your training without taking a rest. So, you know, try holding a plank for six minutes. You'll, you'll know about it. Um, it. It is always worth knowing that those short periods of time, if you use them well, add up. And they certainly add up over the course of, of a week to having done quite a lot. So let, let's say that we're in a, a, a small cramped space, We've got no kit whatsoever. Give me a, a, a 10 minute session that we could do. Yeah, and I, I think like you said, I, I think focusing on your core is a good place to be. I think the other thing to think about is tempo as, some, as well sometimes. So, so you know, doing uh, you know, basic compound squats, they're great for you, you know, squat mechanics are, are so important for us. But, uh, but if we play around with tempo, so maybe hold it static, 
have a little pulse at the bottom of the range of movement, then come all the way up and down before you hit another static. And that would work with any compound exercise, a lunge, a press up or something like that. So playing around with tempo is, is a game changer. Steve's mentioning uh, a plank. Six minute plank would be tough. A six minute dish would be a monster. So a dish you tend to find is a staple of any good gymnastics program because I'm learning how to use my core to control my pelvis and control my trunk, my spine. This is a really strong position that tends to transfer into lots of other activities. This could then turn into like a V-sit crunch. I could do an oblique big V. So I'm going from my left arm to my right foot, my right arm to my left foot. So start to put all those things together for yeah, three sets of 30 seconds on with a really short rest in between. Yeah, great workout. And, uh, and yeah, I think you probably get about 10 minutes out of that. Yeah, I've, I've got um, someone getting in touch here who um, is a little bit older, 61 years of age, and um, obviously super tough because their maxim is um, if you have ground beneath you, then do squats and push ups. No excuses. <laughs> I like that. That, uh, that. that should be written on a mug or a bumper sticker or something. Um, so we've got a couple of questions that have come in um, which are relating to motivation. And I think that the motivation is kind of the key to everything. Um, you know, we can talk for hours about specific exercises that you can do. I guess, you know, I was talking about the rings, the idea of, uh, of going to a specific challenge um, it is a really important one for me. You know, thinking, OK, the next, the next month I'm going to work on doing a muscle up. And that challenge is everything that I'm going to work towards can be so motivating and can, can absolutely send you down the right way of, of, of you know, training it in the way that you want to. Entering for a race that is beyond you or a challenge that is a little bit out of your reach or, or doing it for something that you really care about, doing it for, for a charity that means a lot to you, doing it for, for, a, for a friend or for someone that, you, you know, really, really needs awareness raised or whatever all those things are are immensely motivating for your for your training have you got any on that jim yeah definitely i, I think that's yeah great advice i think for me it's like i was saying at the start of the video about you know why i do the exercise that i do and why we built the gym that we have is get excited about the exercise that you're doing and, and like Steve was saying like the actual exercise you do doesn't matter you know exercise is exercise so if you're gonna have to do it all the time you know consistently find something you enjoy and Sometimes I think people have given up on the idea that exercise can be fun. I'm just not one of those people. Exercise isn't for me. Exercise is for everybody. You just haven't found your thing yet, if that's what you think. So maybe it's martial arts. Maybe it's boxing. Maybe it's, maybe it's the calisthenic stuff, the bodyweight stuff, the Olympic rings. Maybe it's heavy weightlifting. You know, we have so many women come down here and try strongman, thinking strongman is, you know, the big guys on TV at Christmas and realizing it's something completely different and just a fun way of them feeling strong, which is really empowering. So there's a load of ways that you can get people excited about exercise and then they want to get better at it. They want that skill. They want to be able to flip that tire. And when they come back and they get it, they know they've got fitter. They know they've got stronger. So it becomes so much more powerful than, yeah, just feeling like it's a chore all the time. You know? Right, you all. So January is obviously the month that everybody decides to, to join a gym, to go out there and you know set their fitness goals in place. Let's make sure that 2023 is the year that it actually happens. Um, uh, hopefully some of you will know that I'm going back on tour this year as well. I've got my ocean tour going out a little bit later in the year. Um, but if you're looking for any more inspiration, any more ideas, look up wild training. You could uh, go an awful lot worse than, than learning from the master. Uh, and I'm so sorry about all the technical problems about this happening so late and everything. But uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, best of luck with the revision and all the very best from me, Stevie.